So in this video, we are going to continue talking about strings. And now we're going to introduce another type of variable called integer. So an integer essentially is a number. So previously, you learned how to create variables, right? So you start by saying var and then name of the variable and then equals whatever you want it to be. In this case, if string, then you put a string, right? Just as we have it here. And of course, you can put the type, as you can see here, this is how you read it. You would read saying string or str is of type string because this is all string. So we know this. Let's put a comment here again forward two forward slashes. That's a comment. Uh, we know this is a string. Now, what if we want to create then an int integer? Okay, what we do? Well, we'll do the same thing here. We'll say var, let's call this my int is equal to four. And as you can see here, it says four right away. And we can go ahead and print it. We can say my int. And there we go. Of course, the same thing you can see, it's going to print it four. Okay, that's great. Obviously, also explicitly say is of type. So my var, so my int variable is of type, start typing int, and we can just get that integer there. You see, it's the same thing, nothing really has changed. Okay, what if we wanted to print a string along with a number? What if we wanted something to say, um, I have four oranges, but knowing that this four is actually an integer. Well, what we can do, we can go ahead and say print because that's our print method, right? And inside here, we can say, I have, and then if we want to use this integers, here it is my int number four to concatenate or to kind of glue together two separate two different types of variables, in this case, a string and an integer or number. What we do, we go backslash and then open parenthesis and close. And then inside here, that's when we can actually go ahead and say my int. Now you notice we have I have backslash and then open parenthesis. And then we put our variable in this case, my int because it's an integer and has four. So you see here, it says I have four. And then we can proceed here to say oranges or whatever we want to put there or mangoes, right? So I have four mangoes. I have four oranges, right? Whatever you want to put here. So as you can see, we have now inserted two different types inside of the print method here. And it's showing here, I have four mangoes. As you probably have guessed now, instead of putting a variable here, we can go ahead and put a number here, five. Guess what? It's going to work, right? But since we have a variable already here, we're going to put it here inside my int. All right, great. The other thing we need to talk about, as you noticed, we've said here to uh, create a variable. We said var because that's the keyword we need and say we have the name of the variable so we can put whatever we want here. We could either uh, explicitly uh, say what type. In this case, we say colon and then the type or we can get rid of it. Doesn't matter. Still works. This is how you create a variable. And in this case, you are assigning a variable to something, right? Hello, playground. So this, when you say var string, you're creating a variable, but there are times when you want to also create a, uh, say a constant variable. So a constant variable, it, it's exactly what the name implies. A constant variable is not supposed to change. Here's an example. As we say here, var str is equal, is equal to hello playground, right? Let me go back here. Let me comment this code out. So forward slashes. This is now a comment, which means it's not going to be shown here, right? As you can see, it's gone. So let's go try something really interesting here. We said var string or var str hello playground. I'm going to show you that this is actually a variable that changes, right? You can change this str to whatever you want down the road. So you can go ahead and say str again is equal to I am different. Okay. And you see now if I go here and say print and print this str again, so let's copy this here. Guess what's going to happen? I am different. 
Well, but you would say, but you said str here, you put in that bucket, hello playground, right? So whenever you create a variable that you want to be able to change at a later time, as you write your code down here, you can certainly use var string and then initiate it, right? As we did here. And then you can change as many times as you want. And if we can go ahead here and say str is equal, I have changed again. You see, notice here, we're still printing. Now it's saying I've changed again. It's not saying I'm different, the new one. There are times when you want a variable to be unchangeable. That's when we use a different keyword as opposed to var. What do we do? I'm going to get rid of this and all of this because I don't want to complicate things here. What we do now is the following. In fact, I'm not going to get rid of anything. So I'm going to go ahead and comment all of this out. The way if you want to comment more than one line, just highlight everything and go command and forward slash and look at that. Everything is highlighted now. Okay, good. So I'm going to put it down there so we don't get distracted. Okay, now in order to create a what they call a constant variable, you wouldn't say var. Now you said let. When you say when you write this keyword let my my constant I will call is equal hello I am hello constant. Okay? Of course, if you look to the right here, right? It says hello constant because it's still we know it is of course a string, right? But now check this out. If I go here and say print and I say my constant, say enter here, it's going to say hello my constant. Now let's try something very interesting here. Let's go say my constant is equal to I have changed. What's happened? Why isn't I have changed showing here? Still saying hello constant, but I just said here my constant is equal I have changed. Aha, there is the thing. That's because we said let my constant variable is now a constant, which means you can't change it. The system won't let you change it. Right now, you may not see uh, the purpose or the reason why you would want this to happen. But later, you will see as we build our applications, you will see, oh, I see why the difference now or why or when should we use let versus just a standard variable. Okay, good job. So um, I will see you then in the next video where we will keep going and learning more about this beautiful and easy to learn language that is Swift. I'll see you next.